Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Eterno, and welcome to episode... Nine? Yes, episode nine. Sorry, completely forgot that. That's how long it's been. Okay, before I continue with episode nine of Network Chat Programming, I just wanted to say that um, I'm going to be focusing a bit more heavily on this series first, okay? And the reason is, obviously, the game programming series is going to take forever to finish because, you know, I don't even know if it will finish, okay? It's kind of like a Minecraft Let's Play in that sense, right? You can just keep playing it. Same thing with game programming, right? It's just, I don't even know when it's going to end, honestly, because there's an infinite amount of things that we could add to that game. Now, um, as for this, though, this is going to finish pretty soon. I'm thinking like 30 or so episodes, maybe even less. So because of that, um, I'm, I'm probably just going to focus on this because this is what I fin- This is what I want to finish before we start multiplayer for game programming, since this is kind of like the reason I, st- I started this series to um, to demonstrate how sockets and um, you know the different protocols work for sending data over a network. But um, that being said, we're going to hop in and we're going to do a pretty quick episode today, and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean by um, by what's going on, I guess. But um, if if we just do our standard stuff here, you know, local host, whatever port a one nine. 8192, not that it matters. Hit login. Um, you know, we've got an attempting connection here. It's, it's all good. we got to focus on this. And if we, let me just move it so you guys can see. Um, and if I start typing, this is probably my recording area, isn't it? <laughs> if I start typing like, you know, hey, what's up, guys? I want to be able to hit enter, right? Right now, I just have to hit send. And what it does is absolutely nothing right now. But what I want to do is when I hit enter or when I hit send, I actually want to be able to get this text and push it into this little console that we have here. Okay, so let's do that. Um, to do that, we're going to go to our. Um, well, okay. Let let let's first of all hop into our design, right? Because remember, that's we're we're, we're using um the the window builder plugin here. Uh, in order to give us a way to actually, you know, drag and drop and view our changes and, and essentially design our frame instead of having to code the entire thing. So, um, all we've got here is the send button, okay? All I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the send button, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to uh, set action, no, wait, no, hang on, add event handler, sorry, and then action, and then action performed, okay? So, add event handler, action, and then action performed. And then I'm going to click on that. <laughs> and what it's going to do is it's going to flip, flip us back into our code view. And you see that it's actually added this code over here. And what it's doing is this is the J button, of course. This is the J button object. It's adding an action listener to it. Now, what an action listener is, is essentially it listens for a specified action. So what happens is in, in a button, for example, the action performed is the click on it, right? That's what you do with a button. Of course, you can handle other things with it, such as if the mouse is hovering over it and other stuff like that. But a button's action is when it's clicked. Um, so what we've done is we've actually added, I guess, an action listener so that we can now actually tell our code. We, 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 we can actually, I guess, execute code when that action is performed. And in this case, of course, because it's a button, it's clicked. So when we do click, let's do something. So one thing that we want to do is actually, of course, push into our console what we've just said. So how do we do that? So first of all, let's break this down, right? What we need to get is the string of text that we've just typed. Because if I run this, if I run our uh, thing real quick here and just put in our standard parameters, hit login, um, you know, I'm going to type something like, hey, what's up? You know, my name is the Cherno, blah, 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 right? This is the text that we want to get. We want to get this text and we want to actually put it into here. Okay? When we hit the send button. So let's let's talk about how we can do that. Now, that text field of course is called a uh, where is it? It's called a text message, I think. Is it? Yes. Yeah, J text field. It's called text message, okay? So what we want to get is we want to get our message here, which is going to be equal to text message dot get text, okay? And what that will do is, of course, return a string of the text that is in that text field. So we've got that. So now what we can do is actually put it into our console, right? We've got a method here called console, and essentially it takes a parameter, which is message, and it appends whatever we type into the console. So um, all we have to do is type console message, okay? And that's it, it's gonna, it's gonna, put, it's gonna actually you know, print 
our message into our console. And of course, um, that's, well, that's pretty much it, isn't it? So let's try and uh, run that. It's not pretty much it. I just want to show you guys what happens though. <laughs> uh, localhost 8192, login. So, hey, what's up? And then, so, hey, what's up? And then I'm gonna hit, and I'm gonna click send. Brilliant, so it appears here, right? Problem, it does not disappear from here, okay? Now, that's important, of course, you don't wanna keep your message there. So what, what we should do is once we do print it, let's actually clear it. So text message dot set text to just blank, okay? I don't think there's a clear or anything. Um, I don't remember. I don't think there is though, from my memory, there might be, but this works as well. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's not though. So what you can do is just set text to be nothing. Okay. So if we run this now, yarn local host a one nine two log in. Whoa, that did not work. I opened mail. Sorry. I'm going to have to get rid of that. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> so, um, if we type something, hey, what's up? And then we hit send, it disappears. Okay, awesome. Now, what we wanna do is make enter work. And that's really simple as well, luckily. So over here in design, what you'll actually see is that um, in our little uh, thing here, right? Our text message, uh, J text field here, if we right click, and again, we'll go to the add event handler menu, you can probably guess what I'm gonna do here. There's a little, a little something called key and key pressed. So what we can do is we can actually listen for if a key on the keyboard is pressed. So let's click on that. It'll hop us back into our code view and pump in a uh, key list and we can get rid of the override. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just like a, a flag. Um, what we can do here now is basically do, do whatever we want. So we could be like, okay, if the user types in, you know, the letter A, let's just log him out and get rid of the application. We could do that, right? Don't know why you would, but the point is you can, okay? Because but now we're listening for key presses. So, so if, and remember our key event here is E. So if E dot get key code, right? is essentially equal to the key code for enter, which we could just type the number, or you could just go key event dot uh, VK, VK virtual keyboard enter, yeah? So if the if the key that we've typed is the enter key, then what, what, you know, we can basically do what we did here. Now, this is where it comes to the point where, you know, copying and pasting this code is probably not good, okay? Probably not a good idea just because if we wanna change something, we'll have to change it everywhere. So what we could do instead is actually make a universal method here called send. Now the reason I'm type, the reason I'm um, calling it send by the way is because of course in the future, it will actually send to all the other clients or will actually it'll send to the server, okay? Um, but for now it'll only you know, send to our thing. So, uh, and I'll put a message in here, okay? So that it's a fairly universal method here. And we could probably make it private. Okay, at least for now. So now that we've got that, all we have to do is grab this, cut and paste it into send. We can get rid of, actually let, let's just copy this text message like get text since that's what, we'll, that's what we'll be using as a parameter. And then we can just do that. Okay, simple as that. We'll just remove that line. And over here, you know, in our send button, when, when, when we click our send button, we'll just type in send and then text message dot get text. Right? And then over here, when in the enter key, I'll do the same thing. Send, and then the parameter is text message dot get text. Okay? There you go. Pretty simple, isn't it? So now if we run, what should hopefully happen, once we type in our stuff here, 7182 does not matter. Um, I could just be something, uh, I could just do something like, hey, what's up? What's up, bro? And then I can just hit, hit enter and notice it sends. And then of course I can do that repeatedly as you can see. Now, if we uh, just hit enter, it'll actually um, send that as you can see. And whoa, that went down there. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, sorry, next week, what am I talking about? Tomorrow probably. Um, let's quickly fix that by the way. So send in text message.getText, we can just do something like if 
you know, our message is actually equal to nothing, then we can actually just return. So don't send it if it's blank, right? No point. So let's run that again and see what that does. I don't know if it'll work or not because strings can be a bit interesting when you compare them with normal operators. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. But, um, you know, hey, okay. See how it still works? It still sends, even though it's nothing. That's a little thing in Java, which I'm personally not a big fan of. But this equals stuff does not always work with strings. Sometimes it does, which annoys me, but sometimes it doesn't. So what, you, what we need to do instead of if message is equal to blank, what we need to do is say if message dot equals, and I failed typing that. If message dot equals that, right, then return. So let's try that and that will hopefully work. So our stuff again as usual. So, hey, and you notice that um, I'm hitting enter here and it's not actually creating spaces. So I can hit enter as many times as I want and it won't actually send it unless there's something to send, okay? So that is, uh, that, that's gonna wrap up this episode of um, Network Chat Programming. Before it does though, let me just do one more thing. We've got the name of our client of our guy here which is i think yarn in this case over here into a uh, message you know let's just pop up let's just pop down message you know uh, actually message equals name right plus that thing plus a colon uh plus a colon and uh plus our actual message okay something like that and that'll what that will do is of course just append, I guess, the name to the start. So it's not really appending, but it'll put the name of the person who says this at the start. So it will look more like a track line, I guess. And you could also get the, the date and time or whatever, but that's really up to you. So if I go, hey, you can see it, put, it, put, it puts my name in front here. And you can see that there's never gonna be a blank space that I send, even if I hit send. Um, so yeah. That is, uh, that's gonna wrap up episode nine of Network Chat Programming. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Again, if you did, please hit the like button. 200 likes, one video per day. 300 likes equals two videos per day. Let's get to, th let's, let's just get to 300 likes so we finish this series up quicker so we can uh, really focus 100% on game programming and start implementing multiplayer for game programming because I'm looking forward to doing that. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, but either way, guys, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.